Good morning again. Good morning. He is risen. Okay, we're going to try this again. <laughs> he is risen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'd like to use as a sermonic theme this morning, finding joy, finding joy. Things are not as always as they appear. And if you live with other people, that means in your household, there's someone more than you. Things not, are, not only are not as always as they appear, things can move. And even if you live alone, sometimes things move. Amen? So as I age, I'm trying to be better. I'm trying to be wiser with the few steps I bought. So last Sunday, I bought a package of Mexican cheese. You know, there's all kinds of cheese, but I bought Mexican cheese because I wanted to make tacos. And what goes with tacos? Mexican cheese. So that Sunday, last Sunday, Palm Sunday, we went to Mariano's, we got all the ingredients, we got the taco, we got the meat, and we got Mexican cheese. And on Monday, I wasn't in the mood for Mexican cheese, but Tuesday came, and because I had extra Mexican cheese and beef, I thought that on Tuesday night, it would be a good night to make empanadas. You see, during COVID, I learned and somewhat mastered a recipe for how to make empanadas, for which Mexican cheese is actually a great addition. And so another thing I learned in COVID is that when you're working on a recipe, it's good to gather all the things at one time. Don't start cooking and then try to find stuff, but it's good to get all your ingredients, measure them out. And so I got them all on the counter and there was one thing missing. I could not find the Mexican cheese. So you know how when you can't find something, you go through your whole refrigerator and you kind of look around and you move things around and you, I still couldn't find the Mexican cheese. And so I decided just for good measure, I'd go through my refrigerator a second time. I'd really move stuff. I'd really look deep. I could not find the Mexican cheese. Josiah! Because when you live in a house with other people, things move. I called Josiah down and he used the infamous words I hear from kids a lot, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, what, what do you mean you don't know? I bought Mexican cheese on Sunday. There's a lot of Mexican cheese. I got 99 problems and now cheese is one of them. And so he looks through the same refrigerator that I've just looked through three times and not to my surprise, no new discoveries. It's a mystery. The Mexican cheese is gone. Things are not as always as they appear. So I decided for some crazy reason to look in the trash can. Now I try to dig through stuff a little and I see what looks like the side of a bag that looks like my Mexican cheese. Think maybe it got thrown in the trash can by accident that as we were cleaning up that someone had accidentally, Josiah, <laughs> threw my cheese in the trash can. And so as I pull the bag out, not only is the bag empty, but it's torn apart. Prince, for those of you who do not know, Josiah is my son. And Prince is, well, Prince is our newest family member, um, an almost dog puppy. Faintly, I remembered on Sunday waking up and he had eaten all the cornbread, but now it's Tuesday. Things are not always as they appear. When Mary gets to the tomb, she discovered Jesus has moved. He's not where he was. He was the stone in front of a tomb, heavy and large, has been moved. In other Gospels, more than one person goes to the tomb together. But in this Gospel, Mary is all by herself. And when she gets to the tomb, Jesus is missing in action and absent without leave. This is a very serious matter. A whole body from one day to the next, sealed behind a stone, is gone. And so Mary, long before law and order came around, was disturbed by the mystery of the missing body. 
So at the beginning of the week, which is also another word for Sabbath, she went to the tomb to see Jesus, and when she got there, he was gone. Now that's a twist of events. So even though sometimes where we last saw something can move, this is a whole body that is gone. Imagine coming to tend to Jesus' dead body, and the first thing that you notice is the stone in front of the tomb has been moved. I remember years ago in my new home, new to me, walking to my garage at 6 a.m. one morning. It wasn't totally dark, but it wasn't totally light, and discovering that the door to the garage was ajar. I remember the sudden alarm that I only get when I am at the top of the hill of a roller coaster ride, and I realize there is no turning back now. The sense of foreboding that comes over a person when suddenly they realize not only is something wrong, but that one might be in a vulnerable, albeit dangerous, situation. Mary never stepped inside, but was scared enough to run and solicit help. The text says when she saw the stone was moved, she backed up and turned around. Now I know that some of us run towards danger, but I'm in the Mary camp. If it looks like a duck, if it sounds like a duck, if it moves like a duck, if it looks like trouble, you don't have to tell me twice. I'm all the way with Mary, and Mary runs from danger. So I understand her flow when she said, let me go get some help because this burden is too big for me to carry all by myself. She makes it all the way to the disciples and the first words out of her mouth is they have taken my Lord and I don't know where they've put him. And the text says she runs back. You know how most of us this day and time with this level of maturity, we walk to get from destination A to B. Generally, when we see someone running, we know it's a little bit more urgent. When I see the CTA bus pulling off and I see that person running and I blow my horn, I get the sense that this is a little bit more urgent. When I am strolling through the airport because I got there on time and I see this whole family, even the kid running with their little blanket, I generally assume they don't have much time to get to their terminal. When I see someone downtown running with stress on their face, I assume they are trying to get somewhere quick and in a hurry, so I step to the side. Often running indicates the matter is a bit more serious and requires more energy and speed. So Mary doesn't walk back, Mary runs back with this disturbing information that Jesus is missing. Mary is now not the only person that knows this disturbing information that Jesus is missing. More people to share the news with, more folks to be confused, more people to figure out what are we going to do next, more people to pray, more people to problem solve, more people to share the low. That's what we are as faith communities across the world. More people to fill the gap when needed, to hear the concerns, the worry, to celebrate the lost being found, the blind gaining sight, and the dead waking up. Are you woke yet? More people, God's people, to intercede, stand in the gap, to care when human divines are shot down, set up on Trump charges by the empire, and go missing, sleeping in tombs. More people follow her, Peter, and the other one described, instead of being named as the one whom Jesus loves. Scholars have pontificated on who this might be, but one scholar says he thinks it is Lazarus, and that would explain why they get back to the tomb. Having been in a tomb, Lazarus stays on the outside at first. Like Mary, he knows all he needs to know by looking in from the outside. Peter comes and goes inside, coming to the same conclusion. Three people have now been to the tomb, and they've come to the same conclusion. With this information, Peter and the other guy whom Jesus loved, they go on back home. But Mary stays, and Mary gets herself worked up. Anybody in here ever got themselves worked up? Things are not always as they appear. But they sure can look dismal. We have had some difficult days in the last two years. 
what kind of joke is this that someone would actually move Jesus' body? My grandmother said, when it rains, it, it pours. She wasn't kidding. In other words, there are some moments when we cry, but the text tells us that Mary wept. You know, it's one thing to cry. It's one thing to let a few tears fall from your eyes. But when you've had more than you can handle, when the doctor says there's nothing more we can do, when your bad days outweigh your good days, when you are treated as though you're guilty because of the color of your skin, when there is genocide on our streets and some are reporting it's hard to breathe, when you can't get rest at work or home, when every time you look at CNN, there's more bad news, when one leader declares an unprovoked war against another, and the levy breaks within you, sometimes it's all you can do but to weep. You see, it's one thing to cry, but weeping comes from the compilation of built up upon built up stress and worry. Ain't it enough that the empire set Jesus up on some trumped up charges and killed him, though they knew he was innocent, and now they done took Jesus' body, and I don't know where they have put it. Things are not always as they appear. The way it looks is not always the way it is. There are two sides, maybe three sides to every story. And then there somewhere in the middle lays the truth, somewhere in between. As Mary is fully engrossed in weeping because weeping takes energy. Weeping takes time. Have you ever weeping, got a headache from weeping? Weeping takes energy. It takes time. It's a destination at the end of a struggle. And it sits between distress and stress. And when she's almost reached the point of no return, it's in the moment Jesus appears. First, the angel tries to lighten the load, and then Jesus, I imagine, spiritually whispering. The angel tries to get her attention, but she's too busy weeping. And then I imagine Jesus whispering in her words, the words of poet Gwendolyn Brooks, Mary, even if you are not ready for the day, it cannot always be night. Let me go, the text says. Things are not always as they appear. It's been a long week. It's been a long night, and you've been there. But this is a new day, and I want you to find joy. There's so much heaviness in our world, and I need you to balance it out with joy. Sometimes when you've been a, through a lot, it's hard to embrace joy. It can't always be night, people. I was listening to someone say the other day, even as horrible as COVID was, we found some joy there. Even though there was violence in the streets and boarded up stores in January 6th and the war on Ukraine now, still there is joy. Some of you finished projects that you have been waiting to get done. My friend who can't cook discovered she could bake. Another friend developed a bit of a green thumb and went from two plants to 40. And all of us ate healthier because we were staying at home and cooking from home. And when I saw some of you, oh, oh, I could tell you had been eating healthy at home. Amen. <laughs> Family set up regular time to meet and talk to one another. Now folks were finally meeting once a week, every way, every week. Folks found each other. I discovered parks, and as you learned early, I became for the first time a dog owner. A dog owner who has a dog that loves to eat butter and apparently Mexican cheese. People learned and embraced technology as a tool for communication and not the Antichrist. One 92-year-old lady who lives on the South Side became a TikTok sensation, creating content for humor. It now became possible to attend birthday parties, to attend book clubs all over the world without ever leaving your home. Some of you are at home today. We found each other, and in the midst of something that will go down in history, we also found joy. Sometimes you have to look and stay long enough to find joy. It's like going into the thrift shop. It don't jump out at you. You got to work with the situation that's before you. Mary came and she would not leave. She stayed on the scene of the crime, and because of her faithfulness, she was able to see Jesus, and in seeing Jesus, discovering joy which could be a word for us to keep on pressing your way forward. 
Keep on looking. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Keep on keeping on because Jesus finds Mary and Mary finds joy. Jesus says, I got you and you and you and you. It appears to you that Jesus is not there, but hold on because there's more to this story. You might just discover joy. At the Oscars this year, all of us kind of were looking one way, but at the very end of the night, thank you, Mina, the Best Picture Award was presented by Lady Gaga and Liza Minnelli. The 76-year-old Minnelli seemed to be struggling a bit with her lines. I didn't know what was going on. It wasn't a smooth transition. She was awkward between the two, but Lady Gaga did not miss a beat trying to assist and support Minnelli with her lines. The mic was on and you could hear Lady Gaga as she leaned in and whispered at some point to Minnelli, I got you which Manelli quickly responded, I know. Another translation for me in this text is Jesus saying to Mary, I got you. And Mary saying, I know. Maybe even Jesus is saying it to us today, I, I, I got you. And maybe the faithful can respond, I, I know. Our Lord and Savior has got us. Our Lord and Savior has risen, risen indeed. A true story, a man looked in his pocket and he found a $10 bill and a two ones. He stopped by a, por uh, by a store, but outside the store was a person that was begging for money. He reaches in his pocket and he decides to give the person one of his $1 bills. Seeing the gift, the lady smiles and hugs him. This is of course before pre-COVID. She's excited and he's like, I'm happy too. I've never seen someone so happy over a dollar bill. He goes to the grocery store and he picks up a few things, beef, and Mexican cheese. No, that's a joke. That's a joke. Don't see if y'all listen. Cheese. Because <laughs> he wants to make spaghetti. And so he goes up to pay for his food, and he can't figure out where is my $10 bill. He had to end up using his debit card because he didn't have the money to pay for the food. So after he gets home, he reads his sermon about how God steps in to give us what we need when human efforts can be short. And that's when he realized that one is when it comes upon him. He had given the woman one dollar, but God gave her the other nine. This story, no matter how many times he tells it, brings joy. They got some joy over there. God whispered to us, I got you. I'm here. And maybe some of us can say, I, I know when we only have a dollar to give, God's got us, and God gives the other nine. Today, I began with my own story of the missing cheese. I was feeling distraught. It was 30 minutes before sharing God's love was about to meet. I was trying to get dinner done, and there was no Mexican cheese. Now, you're like you're trying to do too much, and it feels like you're not going to be able to get it all done in the time that is before you. I was melting my own self. When Jesus said, not Jesus, when, when Josiah said, I'll go to the store. My brain was foggy and I said, yes. Now y'all, he left out of the house. I hadn't given him a money or a debit card. And that's when I thought this was a bad decision. I thought about all the things that could happen to him in the world. And I had just sent him out. But you all keep telling me I have a young man. As I began to worry, 15 minutes passed and then he walked through back the door. He came in holding Mexican cheese. He told me a little bit about his struggle when he got to the cheese section, but he figured it out and he bought Mexican cheese. And I don't know about you all, but I felt joy in that moment. I felt real joy when he walked through the door, here he was, and he was holding a bag of Mexican cheese, which I will say we still have, I think. I made 30 empanadas that night, he ate 28. But oh, the joy that fills my soul. I spent a whole lot of time looking for things that are not where they are supposed to be, like keys and umbrellas. You get where I'm going? And so I can relate to Mary when she went to the tomb and she didn't see Jesus. So the message of Resurrection Sunday and when you get in a tizzy, remember things are never as they appear. And they can even look dismal. Missing from your eyesight doesn't mean missing from your life. Keep your heart open. Joy is all around us. And when our words and our feet feel less stable, God's got us. Jesus is whispering in our ear, 
even if you aren't ready for the day, it can't always be night. And even when we only mean to give a dollar through our imperfection, God helps us to give the other nine dollars. And when we should never, ever, ever give up on finding joy, you just might find 15 minutes after waiting, joy walks through the door. Happy Resurrection Sunday, God's people. Amen.